I went through hell being pimped, but it was nothing like the hell I went through afterwards. And I think I'm a good mom. My kids are okay. They're better than okay. But I think I would have been a fucking great mom if I didn't have to live through hell. And they didn't have to. So maybe if someone paid attention and tried to help me and try to build me up and push me off to have a better life, maybe I would have. When you think about somebody coming out of the life, they are walking away from everything, right? So their income, um, their place to stay, um, their emotional support oftentimes. One of the things um, that really works in terms of helping um, trafficking victims, you know, move on and get out of the life is helping them to make those, you know, meet those basic needs. So if social service providers and if law enforcement can work together to help make sure that people are getting food, are getting clothes, are getting a safe place to stay, then it's less of a um, compulsion to go back to someone who's providing that. But it's something that we're still figuring out in Maine. We don't have enough beds. We don't have enough safe shelters that are confidential for someone to get out of a dangerous situation right away that can provide everything that they need, food, counseling, transportation, all of it, any basic need. I think two of the biggest challenges we see for victims um, is lack of access to insurance as well as affordable housing. You know, with anything, with drug addiction, with alcoholism, um, and with these issues, you're not going to get help until you want help. That idea can be frustrating to providers or law enforcement or whomever because if you have this out that you're offering someone and you're like, okay, come here, I'm ready to help you and get you out of this life, then because of the emotional abuse and manipulation, they may not want to leave. But our goal is to be able to provide the help when the person is ready. As an investigator and as a law enforcement officer, you kind of have to, you kind of have to hang in there with the women that you're working with because they will, you will see a, ver a wide variety of emotions and defense mechanisms. Uh, in my experience, I've sat at a table, been yelled at for the first, first 15 minutes, but you stick it out and you see that you're really there for them. So it's always worth to, to listen as long as you can. Recovery from this experience is not a straight line. And so that can be really challenging as a provider because you'll see someone make huge strides in their healing and be feeling better. And, and sometimes what happens is as someone stabilizes, all of this stuff starts to come up again and they can really um, just kind of fall back right into that place. I'm thinking of a client that I, I've been working with who, you know, it took her a, a long time, but she is now connected to, you know, counseling and she's, you know, in recovery and things are going well and she's reconnecting with her family and sometimes that can feel like a lot of pressure. So that's one of the things that we have to do too is to kind of sit with people and let them know like you deserve things to go well, like this is okay and, and you do have the skills to kind of keep it going. Although the, sim the, the experience is different between a soldier and say a woman who's involved in prostitution, they're actually very similar. And every day a woman that's being sex trafficked or having to go out on the street wakes up She's on the defensive. Um, she's in constant fear for her life, just as a soldier is. The women I'm meeting today, they definitely have PTSD and they definitely have dissociation and they definitely walk around in survival mode. And helping them in their crisis situation is major. But it's after that. So think about somebody who's coming out of a life of prostitution and being sex trafficked is like, it's. It's a very similar thing because the fear has been taken away. I'm in survivor mode. I'm engaging. I'm everything you think when I leave that we had a good session. I walk out the door. I've already forgot what the hell we talked about. Have no clue. I have a couple memories of a couple things. So whatever was supposed to happen, there's no follow through. The name of the game, it's going to happen. It happens with trauma. You're focused on one thing and some other things might not feel as present. So the victim might not disclose something that might be rel very relevant or I might be very focused on then maybe they initially came in to report an assault and that's what we're focusing on and so other things may be overlooked. And the provider gets to think like, I want to empower her. She can do it. Okay, I'm going to give you the bus pass so you can do it. You can do this. 
and it still doesn't happen. So that to me is that client needs someone to kind of take them through the motions, the travel companion, take them and get it done and model it until she gets strong enough. I think it's different for everybody. If somebody identifies that they need space, then I'm definitely going to give that. If somebody is more identifying that they need a lot of support and a lot of um, like talking a lot and a lot of time, like the 24 hour thing, then for my own self care and my own boundaries, I'm going to say, well, I have my phone from eight to four and you can call this number afterwards. Um, and then also pull other people in if the person wants. So maybe connect them with law enforcement if they're willing uh, so that they can have an after hours person. Maybe find a counselor with them, um, access crisis or access the local resources to provide that support so it's not just on one person. The more I text and call someone, and the, the, the more, regardless of what I say to them, then they have opportunity to have a second, five seconds, a minute, however long we stay on the phone, of normalcy, of love, of kindness. Because usually still, women that have just come out of the life are still connected to all kinds of stuff. Pimps are good pleaders, they're good beggars. They know how to beg, they're really good at it. Um, but even women who are out of the life, they might still know other women that are still in the life. So their conversation still is one up on the other woman. So bitch this, bitch, it's still negative. It's not a healthy conversation. Somehow someone's dissing them or not seeing them for something decent, because that's what's going on. And then they get that one text of just, hey, what's up girl, I was just thinking about you, what you doing? It's just whatever, that person now is having a moment of somebody that cares about me, someone that doesn't want anything. You know what I mean? It's just planting a little bit more of there's people that care, there's people that see me as me. Can you imagine if you had to say in front of 14 strangers that you worked as a prostitute and provided sexual services to six to 10 strangers a day, would you want to be testifying to that? They don't because first of all, they often don't trust the police at the beginning. They don't trust a prosecutor they don't want to expose the life that's sometimes hidden from their families. They are ashamed of what they're doing because of the judgments that other people make about what they're doing. So it's exceedingly difficult to get someone to expose that, especially if they're still in the throes of addiction. They have a history of trauma, often sexual abuse. I do a group at Long Creek with the girls and a group at the Preble Street Teen Center. And so that outreach is kind of becoming a familiar face for people and letting them know what I do. I had one girl in a group who I worked with who came to group for like three months um, and she had identified that she was a victim of trafficking and almost every time after group we started to talk she wanted to meet one-on-one -on -one and so we would talk about what that may look like, what the process may look like if she wanted to report like names of law, the law enforcement who she may report to. Um, and it took about three months until she said, I want to make a report. There's something everybody can do about sex trafficking. If you're a man who makes jokes about Zumba or prostitution, stop doing it because you're creating a culture where it's okay to exploit others. Everybody can do something and everybody once they know must do something.